German Chancellor Scholz finally got tough. He approved the acquisition of a 24.9% stake in Germany's port of Hamburg by China Ocean Shipping Group company, Costco. It was not easy to approve the deal. Although Scholz is the Chancellor of Germany in the cabinet he formed, all six subordinate ministries opposed the merger. Among them, the German Ministry of Economic Affairs and the German Ministry of Intelligence are the most staunch opponents. The German Ministry of Economic Affairs requested that Costco's acquisition of the port of Hamburg be completely rejected. The German Ministry of Intelligence pointed out that Russia is currently the eye of the storm in Europe and China is also the climate of uncertainty in Europe. The German Ministry of Intelligence is in a state of complete distrust of Chinese companies investing in the port of Hamburg. They worry that Chinese companies will steal German economic intelligence through the port of Hamburg. Although all six German ministries objected, Scholz, as the prime minister of the cabinet, had the final veto power, the objections of all the ministers were invalid, and the prime minister approved the matter. But in order to appease the six parts, Scholz also made a compromise. The original investment agreement signed between Costco and the port of Hamburg was that Costco invested 65 million euros to purchase a 35% stake in the port of Hamburg. However, Scholz only approves Costco to acquire 24.9% of the shares, and the remaining 10.1% of the shares will be frozen for 10 years. During these 10 years, if Costco Group can prove that it is a qualified investor, it will have the right to purchase the remaining shares after 10 years. This is actually throwing the difficulties facing the current government on the future German Chancellor. In this shareholding structure, for Costco Group, the damage to its rights and interests is quite large. If it can successfully acquire 35% of the equity, Costco will be able to enter the board of directors of the Port of Hamburg and have the right to directly intervene in the operation and decision-making of the Port of Hamburg. However, 24.9% is different. This is a hurdle deliberately set by the German government for Costco. Because in Germany, as long as the equity exceeds 25%, you can enter the ranks of major shareholders and have a veto power over the company's operations. But 24.9% makes Costco the minority shareholder with the most shares and has no final decision-making power over the port of Hamburg. Under this equity setting, Scholz appeased the domestic opposition on the one hand and successfully introduced Chinese capital on the other hand. In essence, the German government still used its executive powers to intervene in the deal. If it was a purely commercial act, the investment agreement for Costco to acquire a 35% stake in the port of Hamburg had already been signed. The German government cut Costco's shares to 24.9% on the basis of unfounded charges, forcing Costco to change from a strategic investor with real power to a financial investor without real power. Simply put, Costco Group owns 24.9% of Hamburg port, but has no right. Control of the port of Hamburg remained entirely German. Still, getting 24.9% is not bad, and it's better than being completely rejected. In my opinion, this is also a harbinger of the continuous deepening of Sino-German economic and trade cooperation. Even under the strong opposition of the six German departments, Costco still won 24.9% of the shares. In addition, Costco is not only a shareholder of the Port of Hamburg, but also a super customer of the Port of Hamburg. Many people don't understand why the Port of Hamburg wants to introduce investment from Costco Group. What's more, 65 million euros is not a big sum. Hamburg is the largest port in Germany and the second largest container port in Europe. Is there a shortage of 65 million euros? This has to mention the relationship between the port of Hamburg and Costco. Costco Group is the third largest comprehensive shipping service provider in the world and the largest customer of the port of Hamburg. In 2021, benefiting from rising ocean freight rates, Costco has made a daily net profit of more than 300 million yuan, approximately 40.87 million euros, and its net profit in the first three quarters was as high as 97.2 billion yuan. Costco Group used 470 million yuan to acquire a 35% stake in the port of Hamburg, and they earned back the money in a day and a half. 
In fact, in the acquisition of the Port of Hamburg, it was not that Costco had to take a stake, but that the Port of Hamburg wanted to lock in Costco Group with equity. For the Port of Hamburg, Costco Group is a super big customer that cannot be lost. In order to let everyone understand, I will give you an example. Suppose you open a pig farm and raise 100,000 pigs a year. Among them, 33,000 pigs were sold to Costco Group. However, Costco Group not only buys pigs from you, but also from your competitors. In order to win over Costco Group and stabilize your pig shipments, you decide to sell 35% of the equity to Costco Group. With equity binding, the business relationship between you and him will be very close. The Port of Hamburg is the pig farmer that raises pigs for Costco Group. Although the Port of Hamburg has many terminals and has first-class loading and unloading technology, the ships of Costco Group do not have to go ashore at the Port of Hamburg. Because on the coast of Western Europe, Costco has successively acquired a 35% stake in Rotterdam, the largest port in Europe, a 25% stake in Antwerp, Belgium, the second largest port in Europe, and a 67% stake in Piraeus, the fourth largest port in Europe. That is to say, Costco has controlled the first, third, and fourth largest ports in Europe, except for the port of Hamburg in Germany, which ranks second in Europe. By the way, the two ports of Rotterdam in the Netherlands and Antwerp in Belgium are the two strongest competitors of the port of Hamburg in Germany. In the container handling business of the port of Hamburg, one-third of it comes from Sino-German trade, either from Germany to China, or from China to Germany. In the face of such a big customer as Costco Group, do you think the port of Hamburg in Germany has a choice? Is the port of Hamburg not worried about transferring goods from China and Europe to the Netherlands and Belgium? The most typical example is that when the port of Piraeus in Greece was on the verge of bankruptcy, it was taken over by Costco Group. Not only did it survive, it directly jumped to become the fourth largest port in Europe. Scholl served as mayor of Hamburg for eight years, and no one understands the problems of the port of Hamburg better than he. Costco is not an unknown person, it is a big customer who has brought a huge amount of business to Hamburg port. Only by adhering to an open, inclusive, cooperative and sharing attitude can Sino-German trade achieve a win-win situation. From a pragmatic point of view, Germany needs to open up more interests to China in exchange for equal benefits. For China, going to Central Asia to build railways and going to Europe to buy ports are essentially to promote the Belt and Road Initiative. The port is the last stop of sea transportation, and the railway is the transportation hub of land transportation. Only by focusing on land transportation with one hand and sea transportation with the other can the Belt and Road Initiative truly take root and transform from a grand blueprint into a road to prosperity that benefits all mankind. Well, thanks for listening. If you have any suggestions, just leave them in the comments section. We'll come back as soon as possible and check them, and then we'll give feedback. See you next time.